Okay, we're, we're going to 2 Thessalonians, lesson number 2, which is titled, Consequences. Consequences. In fact, I had a conversation with my son Stephen yesterday, and we were looking into Timothy, where he tells us some things we ought to do. And uh, we were discussing, now wait a minute, we thought we were under grace, why do we ought to do anything? Uh, but there are things that uh, we, we, we are not under the law, uh, all things are legal to us, but not all things are expedient. So getting to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 4 and 5, Paul goes on speaking to the Thessalonians and he says, So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. So what's obvious out of this is we're going to suffer. I mean, that is part of what the Bible tells us. Part of our lives as Christians is suffering. But he's telling us that it's a sign of God's righteous judgment. And uh, he says... It, it, which counts us worthy of his kingdom. Now you might notice that he says it counts us worthy. And what we've learned out of the Bible, uh, the count is the same as the word imputation. It means that we are counted worthy. He applies to us the title of worthy, even though we practically in our everyday lives are not worthy. But he says he counts us worthy of the kingdom of God for which we also suffer. So... Uh, we are worthy of his kingdom, he says. And he says that, that others are worthy of judgment. So on what grounds are we worthy of his kingdom and on what grounds are they worthy of judgment? Because we're children of God, because we're believers. On the grounds that we believe, remember, and therefore he imputed or he counted righteousness to us, and therefore we're worthy, not because of what we are in ourselves or what our actions are or anything else, but because of our faith. Then he said, okay, like he said to Abraham, because you believe, I count or I impute righteousness to you. So that makes us worthy. And the non-believer is unworthy because he doesn't believe. On those grounds, those are the grounds God deals with, his faith or not faith. So uh, so basically, as far as the worthiness is concerned, he counts us worthy, he's making us worthy, and he's going to make us absolutely worthy. He's going to have integrity. Right now, we don't have integrity. We are worthy in his eyes, but we're not worthy in all our actions and belief, uh, thoughts uh, down here on earth. But when he's through with us, we're going to be perfectly worthy. So that's that's where we're going. All right, then let's read uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, again, chapter 1, verses 6 to 10. And he says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power, when He shall come to be glorified in His saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So, our trouble doesn't always come from unbelievers. But when it does, watch out. Is what these verses are saying because God makes it clear that He will pay them back. As He always made it clear that He would pay back the ones that persecuted the Jews, even if sometimes He used that as a way of punishing the Jews or waking them up when they needed it, He still punished those that punished His, his children back then. So, uh, so the main thing out of this is we don't need to fill ourselves with angry feelings when somebody hurts us or betrays us or does anything like that. Vengeance is the Lord's and it's not ours. We can let it go. What we should do is pity them because, they are, because that is what God's Word says, that if they go after God's children, they're in trouble. Non-believers, I mean. 
So then the question about them, about non-believers, uh, is do they re get recompensed? Do they get what they've got coming now? It says they're going to get some really bad stuff. Do they get it now? Doesn't seem like a lot of time. Pardon? Doesn't seem like a lot of time. No. A lot of very right. successful Doing great. Yeah, they do not get it now. They get to, they get their heaven right now. They get to have it any way they want. They can just go on. They get it later. They get it in judgment. They get it later. They don't get it now. So they either get it if they're going to go through this tribulation we're going to talk about in a minute, this wrath part that God talks about, or they get it in hell at the end. So they're going to get it, but they don't get it now. How can they avoid it? Having faith. That's it. I mean, it's the most Believe. simplest of things, you know. And if, if we have faith in God, then we believe what He tells us, that every person will have the opportunity to accept or reject the mercy that God offers. So that at the end, it, there will be nobody that will be able to stand up and say, well, hey, you didn't tell me. If you'd have told me, I'd have chosen you. <laughs> Do we need to worry about this vengeance of God that's coming? No. We don't, but a lot of people do. You know, they like to fill themselves up. They love to study the book of Revelation, and they love to study about tribulation and hard times. They're interested in that kind of stuff. But it's because they have failed to understand or been taught that that doesn't apply to us, that, that something happens to us before we, we get there. So we don't have to worry about the vengeance of God, but do we know any that do? Sure. Yeah. Anybody that doesn't believe, we should be concerned about because they are facing the vengeance of God. And the only thing that's the thread they're hanging on by, as long as they don't believe, is the days that they have left in their lives, which in some cases can come immediately. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to tell them the truth and pray for their souls. And this is the gospel. Let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 to 10, specifically. It says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That's when we're going to get to rest with, with Paul and all the other believers. But he's going to appear in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and shall be punished with everlasting destruction. Now, I won't work, uh, read the rest of those verses, but what it's making really clear is there's a choice. And we have a choice to make, and we can make the choice. And believers get to go to rest and be glorified. And unbelievers get to go to everlasting destruction. And that's it. You know? And it's uh, our choice. So... Then the question is, when, when does this start? When do unbelievers go to everlasting destruction and when do believers go to rest and be glorified? Well, we know, and we're going to look at it again, that right now we're in this age of grace that we're in. And so right now, this is what we're operating in. But when this age closes, when it closes, we're going to be taken out of here. And then an age of wrath is going to start. And during that age of wrath, that's the time of vengeance. That's what follows. What follows that is the kingdom of Christ is going to be established on earth for a thousand years. So, But right now, we're in this age of grace. And I just want to point this out because we're going to deal with uh, some other things that... that